Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing out there in Radio Land? Well, guess what? It's, it's that, that time, time again, again for the, the Freedom, Freedom Radio, Radio Broadcast, broadcast brought, to brought to you by Cheryl Fletcher, Fletcher Ministries. Ministries. You can, you can find, find out more about my ministry at www.sherylfletcherministries.com or www.sherylfletcherministries.org. Are, Are you ready tonight, tonight to be empowered? Are you, Are you ready, ready for a life-changing word? Are you ready to be delivered? Are you ready to be set free? Tonight, tonight, call a neighbor. Call a friend. Tell, Tell someone, someone that, that the Freedom, Freedom Radio, Radio broadcast, broadcast is on. on. God, God bless, bless you. Amen. 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 I'm so excited on today. I pray you all are doing well on tonight. Well, it's a bit rainy. It's been a bit rainy in Florida. Um, every day we've had some showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. You know, and so um, I'm grateful to God. Um, so it's I think it's still raining outside. But thank you all for joining me, joining me this Thursday evening. I am so grateful to each and every one of you joining me by Facebook or joining me by Spreaker.com. All of you joining me by my mobile app, Cheryl and Fletcher Ministries. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, I want you to be a part of this um, broadcast on tonight. Don't don't leave me helpless now. We're gonna talk tonight about a very delicate, delicate topic. And the topic we're going to talk about tonight is, do you have the Holy Ghost? Now, what type of question is that you're asking, woman of God? Are you are you being funny or what are you doing? Do you have the Holy Ghost? Because, you know, the Holy Ghost is, the topic on the Holy Ghost is perceived in so many different ways. And there's so many different understanding and so many people have their own beliefs and understanding of the Holy Spirit. Some people believe the Holy Spirit is just an expression, is just a force, you know. Persons believe that the Holy Spirit is just uh, uh, the wind, you know. But he is the third person in the Trinity. Person, that's right, you heard me. The Holy Spirit has feelings. He is the third person in the in the in the Trinity. We believe in the Trinity, the Trion God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Not a God with three heads. We don't believe in a monster. We believe that God, God the Father, Jesus is still the Father, and the Holy Spirit is the Father. A God the God the Holy Spirit, God the Son, and God the Father. And so we believe in the Trinity. The word Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible, but if you look, there are instances of where the Trinity, you would see that the Trinity um, came together. If you look in um, Genesis 1 and 6, that will be the first occurrence where the Bible declares, let us make man in our image and likeness. And so who God was talking to? He was talking to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They were, he was saying, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Now I want you to be a part of this because um, it's um, I you know get your papers and your pens and um, you know we want to discuss this and talk about this because so many people really do not understand the work of the Holy Spirit and this is very very important in the life of a believer. This is super important in the life of the believer. Also when Jesus was baptized, remember when he went to John the Baptist and John said, Hey man, I'm not I'm not worthy to loose your shoes. What you doing? No, Jesus. Let me you baptize me. You get this thing mixed up. And Jesus said, No, suffer it so to be now. And uh, with that being said, Jesus, John baptized Jesus. And remember what happened when John baptized Jesus. What happened? The Bible says that a voice came from heaven and the dove rested upon Jesus' shoulder and said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That was another occurrence of the Trinity um, that was uh, displayed in the word of God. And so these are occurrences of the Trinity of seeing where we see God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost occurring all at one time. So I want us to now listen. If you're just tuning in, this is the Freedom Radio Broadcast brought to you by Sherilyn Fletcher Ministries. I want you to be a part of this topic tonight. Do you have the Holy Spirit or are you still waiting on him? Do you have him or are you still waiting because, you know, you, you just didn't get him at that point of salvation? What is your belief? Do you have him or do you feel that like you have not gotten him as yet? You have to wait 
you have to tarry, you have to, um, you know, do certain things and, and, and get yourself together before he comes. What is your, what is the teaching that you believe um, about the Holy Spirit according to the word of God? And let's use scriptures to back up why we believe what we believe, okay? So let's talk about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the wind of God, the rock Akadash. I'm probably not doing that word any justice, but you know, they will say rock sound like they're you know hawking ruach akadash um the ruach akadash the wind of god and so i want us to talk about the holy spirit because again um jesus was on, on the earth as we know and the thing about what i love about it is that every theologian every historian every scientist prove that <laughs> that Jesus walked on earth whether they believe that he died on the cross whether they believe that he was just a prophet everyone um confirmed that Jesus was on this earth there was a man called Jesus on this earth now we know um as children of God that Jesus came and he died for our sins because of what happened in the garden you know what happened in the garden right what happened in the garden y'all tell me what happened in the garden what happened in the garden of Eden that's why Jesus had to come now to rescue us now from this mess that Adam already had put us in God is faithful though. You know, he didn't just leave Eden, just leave us like that. He was the ride or die. He said, man, no, no, no. I can't leave my creation like that. I'm the ride or die. You know, I'm going to make a way of escape for them. I got to do something for them. And so now as we, as we are listening, I want us to take this really serious. And, and you can call in at 321, I think it's 3607025 and give me your you know your input i would love to hear your input um i don't you know we don't want to we don't want to have a tug of war i just want to have some input um on your beliefs on on what you get from the word of god and on the work of the holy spirit hey dizziness hey and so we need to understand now here it is the holy spirit oh so now the bible says jesus said this is what jesus said he said in Luke 24 and 49, he said, and behold, I am sending forth the promise of my father, but you, you will, I'm sorry, I, that's not the one. I want to do this one first. This is the first thing Jesus said to the disciples. He said to them, he said, I, according to John 14 and 18, this is what Jesus said to his disciples after he was walking with them for a while and, and he was with them for a while. Um, um, this Bible declares that he said, listen, girl, he said that in, in, in John 14 and 18, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So Jesus was making a promise to his disciples that he will not leave them comfortless. He was making and letting them know that, you know what? I'm here with you now. And when I go, I must now leave the Holy Spirit with you. So I'm not going to just leave you by yourself because you know what? Peter, James, and John, and the rest of y'all, I've been working with y'all for three and a half years and y'all, some things y'all still didn't get. Y'all, y'all, I can't leave y'all alone. No, 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 no. I have to have the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray to my father that he sends the Holy Spirit. What was the job? What did Jesus say the Holy Spirit was going to do? He said the Holy Spirit was going to lead you and guide you to all truth. Is that not the word of God? Hi, hello, James. He said he'll lead you and guide you to all truth. Okay? He is going to what? Lead you and guide you to all truth. Why does he have to lead us and guide us to all truth? Well, check this out. We were born in sin and shape and iniquity and we have a carnal nature where we always have a desire to sin. I don't care how holy, holy ghost shouting, speaking tongues and fire baptized we are. We have a desire to sin. You know, that carnal nature have a desire to do the things that is not pleasing to God. That's why every day they will say, oh God created me a clean heart. Every day we need our heart to be renewed. We need a, a circumcision of our heart 
heart Solomon says new mercies I see every morning God is merciful so every day we get new mercies because we use them up you know sometimes we sin in our thought our deeds our action you know sometimes a lot a lot of times in our thoughts because you could be saying some things about people and saying some things that are not of God and sometimes you're not even conscious of what you're doing so Jesus said you know what I'm not going to leave you comfortless because that carnal man is never going to bow that carnal man is enmity against God that carnal nature can only come to the place of where it's mortified that carnal nature has to be put under subjection and is only by the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the one that is able to put everything in place so listen to this now would you listen to this carefully so now Jesus say I am not going to leave you all like that you know you have had your friend bail out on you you know they say man I I got your back, ride or die. You know, I, I got you, man. You, don't worry. I'll go to jail for you. I'll take a bullet for you. And when the time came, you know, bam, they were gone. You know, um, and I'm sure they meant what they say when they said what they said. But you know, circumstances um, surrounding the situation, they decided at the last minute that uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that. They opt out. So don't 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 hold it to their charge. You know, they didn't mean that. They meant what they said. You know, and so, but Jesus said, no, I got y'all back. Because I realized that this carnal nature will always be there to hunt you. You're going to always have trouble with this carnal nature. So I'm going to leave this comforter who is going to lead you and guide you to all truth. Amen. And so now when we look at it, and so <laughs> we get the sister red when you laugh, you just brought back memories. You know I was <laughs> But listen, so hear the hear this now. So now the Bible is saying, so Jesus said, the Bible said in John 24 and 49, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high until ye be endued with power from on high now when I was saying that I didn't think about you until you laugh um, and behold I send the promise of my father but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power now what do you think Jesus was saying now here's where um, the mix up come um, well this is what the Holy Spirit is, uh, is given to me and this is what I, I'm getting from the word of God okay now when a child when a person gives their life to Christ and you give your life to Jesus who then comes into your heart because Jesus is not here who comes into your heart because I've heard where a person said okay um, you have to tarry for the Holy Spirit he don't when you accept Christ you have to tarry for him you have to it could take a year it could take two years you could get it instantly it could take a month it could take two weeks it could take five days so my question out there to you is if when I accept Christ if the Holy Spirit is not indwelling on the inside of me because Jesus said that he will not leave me comfortless so if if at that point I accept salvation then he's leaving me comfortless because now I don't know what to do because I might not make it the Bible study all the time and God forbid if I used to be the God of mom and I'm working on Sundays I might not work it on Sundays at every time I not be able, may be able to get in whole, a hole of my pasta every time so what do I do so do I tarry I don't know how to tarry what I supposed to do sit down by the dock of the bay watching the tide roll away how do I what, do, what am I supposed to do if Jesus said that he will not leave me comfortless that means that he is always going to be with me if God said in his word that he will never leave me nor forsake me then you're trying to tell me that the minute I accept salvation so the Bible says when you accept salvation you know what happened the spirit of Christ my God from Zion the Holy Spirit immediately takes residence and he indwells on the inside of you now listen to this before you blow me up, listen to this. He, he comes and he dwells on the inside of you. And his job is to lead you <laughs> and guide you to all truth. How are you going to know which way to go? How are you going to know which way to turn? How are you going to understand your word of God? Do I call my pastor, 4 o'clock in the morning, pastor, um... Since I don't have the Holy Spirit yet and I have the tarry, um, can you please uh, explain this passage of scripture to me? Because I don't have him right now. I'll be able to understand him when I have the Holy Spirit. So I want you to, I want you to get thinking here now. 
if God said God the Spirit and if God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus are one then if God said that I am with you always even until the end of the earth then that means that immediately we accept Christ guess what your spirit man becomes alert again whoa you recognize that you have a God now you recognize like Adam and Eve oh my God I have a good father oh my God you awaken now to understand that there's a sovereign God you now your spirit communes with God are you understanding me you commune with is the Holy Spirit that teaches you to follow Jesus and Jesus leads you to your father that's why Jesus job in this place and this position here now is that no man can come to the father but through him so when we pray we have to pray in Jesus name name whatever we do we have to do in jesus name jesus is the advocate he's the one that paid the price he's the one that shed the blood and guess what he is still on the right hand making intercession for you and i because of this old carnal nature the holy spirit comes on the inside now let's go the holy spirit indwells on the inside of you and what the role of the holy spirit there is it teaches you how to follow jesus so the initial the initial um, state of the Holy Spirit is to begin. So the Holy Spirit comes in as a fetus, you know, because when you're born again, you have to think of yourself as a fetus, as a baby. You're now a new babe in Christ. You are born of the Spirit. You're born of the Spirit, not of the natural, because, you know, we, we're not doing that. We're born of the Spirit. So as you're born of the Spirit, you are this baby. And so now you have to understand the spiritual things. Who's going to teach you that? The pastor? It's the Holy Spirit that's going to teach you that. So I'm going to get to this Tarian part a little later. But I want to I wanna, a later ground about the Holy Spirit. Because let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is so important. He's the main ingredient in the life of a believer. You have to understand. He's our sealer. He's our keeper. I mean, there's so many names of the Holy Spirit. And he plays such an active role in our lives. And he's the least. Because he's the third person in the Trinity. A lot of times we treat him as such. And we, are, we don't pay attention to him. And not realize and that is him that wrote the scripture the bible said that the letter kill it but the spirit give it life who's the spirit the spirit of god gives life to the words the letter that was written by men inspired by the holy spirit the spirit of god illuminates and tell you and begin to reveal to you what god is truly saying to you for that season one thing i like about god the word is never exhausted and so each and every time you read the word i might get something different you might get something different but guess what is nothing that will come and clash it will always be parallel it will always be far. it will always go with the next scripture each scripture you'll find the next scripture that help the understanding if you ask the holy spirit so now i don't have him if i have to tarry for him then i want to ask this question if i have to tarry for the holy spirit then who is dwelling on the inside of me so i i and and, and again you can call in uh, 321 360 7025. Because I believe that when you come as a child of God, when you ask the Lord to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior, I don't think he put a block in there. I believe that the Holy Spirit comes and dwells on the inside of you. And when he comes and dwells on the inside of you, guess what happened? He now began to teach you. He's a fetus. And the more you begin to read your Bible and the more you pray, he will teach you. He will give you that. He will give you that conviction. He will convict you of sin. He will help you to understand. He's like a GPS. He will show you the way. He will tell you what is right. Tell you what is wrong. He will teach you to follow Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And the initial stage of our salvation so when we say oh the devil made us do it no the bible says in james 1 and 13 do not say that you are tempted by god because god don't tempt no one we are tempted when we are drawn away by our own lust so you ever wanted that thing you wanted it you wanted the cheesecake you wanted the fornication you wanted it so all the all the enemy does is come and say well hey high five baby let's go do this you might as well let's do this since you're thinking about it let me help you along he comes alongside and helps you to do the sin but he, nobody can make you sin it's only we are drawn away by our own lust so the holy spirit is very important in the initial stage of a believer because he comes in he lives on the inside your spirit man is now alive and your spirit is the holy spirit that teaches you the things the deep things it's only the spirit of god that relates to you now and help you to understand what god is saying to you and it helps you to understand the word of god he helps you to understand the word of god now one thing i love about the holy spirit he is a gentleman 
God has given us free will. So even at that, even though he, he comes into your heart and dwells and teaching you now, okay, and showing you the things of God and you beginning to see some great... And how many of you remember when you first got saved? You couldn't stop crying and, oh my God, you felt like you was light as a feather, stiff as a board. And I mean, and you were just all high in the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, you, I mean, you would just cry and I mean... It was such an awesome feeling. It was a feeling like none other. This is a feeling that you can't explain to anybody. They have to experience it for themselves. The Bible says no man come to Christ unless they're drawn by the Holy Spirit. So you're trying to tell me now the Holy Spirit can draw me to him and then drop me? That's a wicked Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can learn me and say, come, come to Christ, come to Christ. And then say, okay, now you got to tarry for me. I, I can wait until you get me. Hold on. I can wait. You wait. I'm going to bring you to Christ and then you're going to have to tarry to me. You're going to have to go and tarry and it might take a year for you to see me again. So I want you to know now it might take two weeks for you to see me again. So I just want you to know I'm just going to bring you to Christ and I'm leaving. <clears throat> Let's think about that for a minute. That don't add up. So that means if 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 we are so because it is not saying that we are tarrying for the Holy Spirit, but we're going to we're going to get there. So Understand now the Holy Spirit comes and he teaches us. He teaches to follow Jesus. He helps us to understand the word of God. He helps us with our daily life. So we are able to walk with God. We know how to talk with God. So there's nothing that is left unturned. It's up to us now to say, you know what? The Lord, please help me. It's up to us now as children of God. When we understand and we accept Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and regenerates. And what is regeneration? So... There's three parts of salvation. I'm saved. I shall be saved. Let me see. Um, being saved. I shall be saved. I don't remember the three parts. But anyway, the first part is when you come to Christ, okay, regeneration starts. And regeneration starts. And every time regeneration starts, you know what's happening? You are being regenerated. You are being made anew. You are on the potter's wheel. Remember the Bible says that the potter was the clay was put in the potter's hand and it was marred in the hands of the potter and he made another clay now i'm believing the revelation that the lord gave me for that was that um when god placed adam and eve in the garden they were perfect beings who they were man they were eating and chilling i guess they could have said the fish come in my hand let me eat you you know i don't know um you know <laughs> they they had liberty to everything you know, they had liberty to everything. And so the thing about it is, is what was so good about it is, is that the Holy Spirit was there through it all. So now understand, understand, understand this. So if you, you get the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is indwelling on the inside of you, he's regenerating you. So now because of Adam and Eve's sin, we were in the potter wheel because of Adam and Eve's sin. We were mad in the hand of the potter. My God from Zion. And what he said, he had to make us into a new clay. So God had to make us into a new clay. We continuously stay on the potter wheel. That's regeneration, folks. So a lot of times we get guilty. We begin to think about our past sins. That's because you don't understand the work of the Holy Spirit. That's why a lot of people turn back because they're told they don't have the Holy Spirit. They got a tarry for it. They got to wait for him. He ain't come yet. What do you mean he ain't come yet? He drew me to Christ. So you're going to draw me to Christ and what you going to jump me no he is there with you he's there to lead you and guide you to all truth and so what he does and so a lot of people give up on being saved you're saved when you say that's immediately where your spirit man is alert being saved is where now the holy spirit is doing regeneration and this is the portion where a lot of believers drop out and don't understand and give up on God because they keep on messing up and they keep on messing up and they get so tired and they're like you know what I can't do this now listen to me I did not give you the license to sin I'm talking about things that you are struggling with those things that you don't want to do Paul say those things I don't want to do I find myself doing those are the things that I'm talking about now I'm not talking about you going to do what you feel like doing I'm talking about those things you don't want to do it but it's a struggle it's a 
thorn in your flesh. Paul says there is no good thing that dwells in us. No good thing. There's no good thing that dwells in us. So we are always striving to get to that place of perfection, which means maturity. You will never be perfect until you become mature. And maturity means that you know what? I know if I touch that thing, my mama gonna know. I know if I do certain things that this is this is what's going to happen. I'm now mature. I know if I put my hand on the stove, I'm going to get burned. So now I have some spiritual maturity. I know I have the fl- I have the flee the very appearance of evil. I know I can't do Netflix in a movie and I'm single. I know that there's some things that I have to stay away from. The Holy Spirit brings these things to you. He regenerates you. He teaches you how to follow Jesus. And so, and I want to say to you, so don't feel guilty. Feeling guilty of your past every time, you know, um, God is trying to do something on the inside of you and you feeling guilty. And you know, people that make you feel guilty because you know what? <laughs> um, a lot of times um, <laughs> when you have a past and you get into the house of the Lord, and you're trying to do the work of the Lord. People remind you where you come from. Oh, I remember she used to walk the streets. Oh, I remember she was on crack cocaine. And they would make you feel that you are not good enough to do the work of the Lord. That's why it's important that you understand the works of the Holy Spirit. They will make you feel that, you know, are you not good enough? And for saying that, saying that is 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 on a religious spirit. The religious spirit comes against the grace of God. It's, it's, it's an insult to the grace of God. It's saying that the grace of God is not good enough to cleanse you. You need, you can't stand up there. You can't preach to me. That's what you did. You, you, you used to be a liar. You used to be a gambler. That's where regeneration comes. That's where the Holy Spirit is making you over again. He's making you over again. You know, when I first came to Christ, I still had a drinking problem. So I would, um, I loved the Lord and I wanted to change. I really did. I wanted to change, but alcohol had hold on me for a little bit. You know, there was a, uh, uh, I had a struggle in that area and other areas. So, <laughs> I went and, 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 but before I get, before I got to church, what I would do is I would just, um, have me a drink. I'd have me a drink, um, you know, and, and take a mint or so, and I'd be good to go. Nobody noticed it. Nobody said anything to me. You know, I was working for the Lord and that was fine. They were fine. I was fine. We all were fine. And, 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 and I said, Lord, I, I don't want to stay like this. I want you to set me free because I used to drink breakfast lunch and dinner supper time snack time i was an all-around all-day drinker you know uh, i'm not talking about no light drinker i'm talking about a drinker first thing in the morning i would get a cold beer who with a little icicle in it um or i would drink get a drink before i leave out you know a nice mixed drink some gin bacardi vodka whatever was strong um, during the summer times, you know, because it's hot, you know, drinking liquor, it, it makes you extra hot. So I would have some beers first. And then after I drank my beers, then I would have my liquor, you know, when it get cooled down during the day. And I drank all the time, even at work. When I was working, a manager at one of the fast food, I saw my fast food cup and my drink was in there. I was feeling pretty good, but I wanted to be set free. And God set me free. And by his special grace, I have no desire for alcohol. As a matter of fact, I was like, man, I think about all the money I spent. But, you know, this is the things that we go through. And so we have to remember that the Holy Spirit is our regenerator. It is nothing that is too hard for him. You don't have to be ashamed if you're struggling with a sin. That's the work of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So that's why I'm trying to figure out. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, who's there to help you? The indwelling of the Holy Spirit comes in. He indwells and he helps us. He leads us and he guides us to all truth. So the Holy Spirit helps us now with whatever you're struggling with. So a lot of times you might be struggling with hey you might be struggling with drug addiction you might be struggling with fornication you don't have to be ashamed the blood of Jesus cleanses every sin the blood of Jesus washes white as snow the blood of Jesus can wash away every sin you know the song the old people say what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus can cleanse anything there is nothing that is too hard for God to do and so we need to understand the Holy Spirit is there to teach you 
You pray before you open the word of God. You pray, Holy Spirit, teach me, help me to understand this word. I've heard many persons who just start up with Christ. Oh, I don't understand those words, thee, thou, and all that other stuff. Well, if you went to school and you take Shakespeare, some of those words right in Shakespeare. But anyway, that's a whole nother topic. But the thing about it is, is that, <laughs> you know, they, 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 the Holy Spirit is there to teach us. And the thing about it is, how do we know the word is so powerful? Because every time we try to read it or we try to get an understanding, we fall asleep or we get distracted. It. So the Holy Spirit is your sealer. He is the one when God the Father looks down, he has to see the seal of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, listen, you have to be born of the water and of the Spirit. He said, if the Spirit of Christ is not in you, you are not of mine. So that means, that's a, a perfect example, case closed. If the Spirit of Christ, if the Spirit of God is not in you, then you're not, uh, you're none of mine. So God's Spirit has to be on the inside of you for Him to be able to say, declare that that is my child. So if you get, if you, um, I'm, I'm asking God to come into your life and, and you have the tie for the Holy Spirit, so who's there? Because as far as Jesus is concerned, you're none of His if you don't have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Now, what Jesus was meaning when He was talking about in, um, Luke 24 and the 49 chapter again if you're just tuning in this is the freedom radio broadcast brought to you by Sherilyn Fletcher Ministries Listen, you can call in at 321-360-7025 if you want to be a part of this conversation. The Holy Spirit is a very delicate conversation. And I want you to know that He is there to help you. He is the Bible, the Bible tells you, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? God has given us eyes to let us know that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. And that's why we gotta keep our temple clean. We can't do it by ourselves. If we could have done it, Jesus would not have to die. The Holy Spirit comes in and helps us. He helps us. He shows us the way. He helps us. The grace of God is what is when we are struggling, the grace of God helps us. While we're struggling, the grace of God covers us and help us in those things that we're struggling in and then God will set us free. We, we Look at here. We strive and you have a part to play in it too now. I'm not telling you to sit there and say, well, well, Holy Spirit, do your work. You have to play a part in it. You have to shun the very parents of evil. You have to resist the devil and he will flee. You have to play a part. You're going to have some great victories and you're going to have some great defeat. You have to understand that. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times. Again, I'm not giving you license to sin. I'm telling you because there's so many people that really love the Lord and they're struggling. And they, they, they don't they don't want to do these things. They want to live right. They want to live a holy life. But they don't understand to live a holy life because they keep on messing up and they keep on um, um, living in deficit and it seems like their life is is cray cray it seems like everything is going worse more everything has gotten worse since they came to christ and that's a trick and a plan of the enemy but if you ask the holy spirit if you talk to the holy spirit he is the great helper yes he will help you he's the one he's the paraclete one that comes alongside you and help you to understand the things that you go through he helps you to access the kingdom of god because it's only the spirit of god that searches the deep things of god now let's talk about this um indwelling this um um, Holy Spirit so Jesus tell them again we're going to read Luke 24 and 49 and it says and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in Jerusalem and tell ye be endued with power on high now remember what I said the Bible says that the porter the clay was marred in the hands of the potter and he had to make us over again because of that sinful nature because of what happened in the garden of Adam and Eve he had to make us over again and how he make us over again when we accept salvation through Jesus Christ by faith through G Jesus Christ then what happens is while we accept faith through Jesus Christ what happens is now we are, made, we are making he is making us over again we remain on the potter wheel but what is happening is because we have that mess of nature you know that bad thinking that way of where we want to take matters into our own hands you know when somebody get you upset you know you want to render evil for evil you want to tell somebody off you know how it is you know you gotta you gotta do good to them that that um you gotta bless them that curse you you gotta love them that hate you and you gotta pray for them that despitefully use you oh, i won't pray for nobody man let them catch it man they need to catch it they could get their things coming man every dog have their day you know that's what we say yeah come on you know and all this other stuff 
Um, and so, but that's not the intentions of God. God wants us. He said, when a man ways please the Lord, he makes his enemies at peace with him. That's where God wants us. He wants us because when you, when your enemies at peace, God gains a child and you gain a friend. That's the, that's, that's, that's where God wants us. That's why he told us, he said, pursue peace. And especially those in the household of faith. If it's possible, make sure that we are pursuing peace with everyone. But that, you know, of course, you're going to have some people that you just cannot pursue peace with, but you can pray for them. Are you hearing me on today? So now listen, when we get to the part of the promise, now, God has called us. Every one of us has a purpose. Every one of us has a, uh, God has a plan for each and every one of us on this earth. And so because he has a plan and a purpose, yes, you, you have, there's a plan and a purpose for your life. Every one of us have a plan and a purpose. We're not just here to, to take up, you know, space and sit on the couch and play whatever, Fortnite and all these other stuff. We are here to do the will of God. We all have something to do while here on this earth. So now because of our kind of nature and because of the sinful nature, because of that nature that is now still corrupted, we have to now tarry for this power. What is this power? This is the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, tell you be endued with the donamus power, the fire, the anointing. We all are anointed, but you got to go through this fire where God now makes you ready for service. Understand, you cannot be using the raw material. He got to now put you, Micah calls it, a refiner's fire and a full of soap. And that's where the power, that's where the tarrying come. Now that part does not come just like that. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is a one-time event. But there are many infillings where you go from glory to glory and from strength to strength. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost can come immediately during salvation. It can come a year, it can come two years, it can come a week later. Because that's when we say, okay, that's when the Holy Spirit will come and come upon you and that fire the initial evidence listen to me not the only evidence that's not the only evidence okay the initial evidence is speaking in tongues and this language that's why paul say though i have if i have tongues of men and of angels which is our natural tongue and the angels which is the speaking in tongues which we don't understand if i have not love i'm a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal so you still got something else you got to deal with so now when we get the tongue and we're speaking in these tongues we need to understand now this now gives us the access to warfare this gives us direct connection to heaven because the bible says there are things that we do not understand and the spirit of god will help us and intercede in us and groaning in others that cannot be understand the holy spirit is when we get that power that dolomous power where we can command devils and tell demons to stop where we now can speak where we now can lay hand on the sick and they shall recover so the holy spirit already give you a gift you are born with a gift so now the gift has to be put with fire the gift has to be now now, the gift of the he has to now put fire to that gift so that that gift now can be purified that God is able to use you for his service that's the baptism of the Holy Ghost the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the one is, a, is, is what gives us now that anointing that will cause when you sing you know if, have you ever heard somebody sing and they sound so good but then you they're like they sound good but you felt nothing but when somebody else sing the same they can sing A B C D they can sing Mary had a little lamb and you're like, whoa, I felt something. That's the power. That's the anointing. That's the fire. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost that comes now and purifies a believer and gets them ready for purpose. Not many people, <laughs> not many people are able to go through that testing or that fire because it's, it's you know, it's, it's not an easy road. And many persons don't understand and give up because we get so focused on the cares of this life. We get focused on the things around us. We get focused. Uh, we get distracted so easily. It's very easy to get distracted. You know, back then they had some camels and, you know, they didn't have that much to distract them. But us, we got so many, we got, I mean, we got so many things to distract us now because every day we're looking, technology is growing every single day. 
So now the baptism of the Holy Spirit is leading because when you are not having the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you your level of ability to fight warfare is not as heightened as a person who has that fire, who know how to command devils, who know how to stand up, who know the understand the things of the spirit. That's the reason for the baptism because the disciples had the, listen to me. The disciples had the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathed the Bible say in John, I think the last chapter. It says, Jesus breathed upon them and say, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Remember, he breathed upon them and say, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Then he told them to go and tarry now for the, to be endued with power. Because what, 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 he, what they needed to understand was Jesus was not there anymore. So because he was not there anymore, they needed now to go and get the power now so that they could continue the works that God was doing. They needed, while, they, while Jesus was here, they were able to lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. They are able to do that because Jesus was here. But now they need the Holy Spirit so they could continue the work, lay hand on the sick, they could continue the work. And if you read the Bible, the Bible says 3,000 was added to the church that day. There were so many miracles that was happening. Peter's shadow was healing people. He wasn't doing that when Jesus was here. Peter was so busy trying to chop off everybody here and not everybody. He was, he was so busy being right but when Jesus left and he got the power of the Holy Spirit, he began to operate as Jesus would have operated while he was on this earth. Y'all got it now? He began to operate. He began now to do it. Peter was healing. Peter said to the lame man, Silver and gold have I none in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You see the power of the Holy Spirit? Before time, they were like, Master, we can't get what happened. This boy couldn't. Uh, there was a time that they could not get the young man healed. And Jesus said, Listen, how long I can be with y'all, man? Y'all got to get this thing together. This kind come through fasting and praying. So now, when Jesus left, the Holy Spirit came and took on and carried on the work that Jesus had already established on earth. And so now he began to work through the apostles, doing the greater work, sending them out into Samaria and Judea and to the ends of the earth. And so you have to understand if you are a child of God, I want you to understand the Holy Spirit is very, very vital and important in your life. I don't want you to ever think for a minute that you do not have the Holy Spirit in your life because he comes in. He teaches you to follow Jesus. He helps you and show you the way. Listen, if you are just tuning in, I want you, this is an, I, I, I tell you, this is an awesome topic. It's a very delicate topic and it's a topic that people need to understand so that they can understand their walk with God. The Holy Spirit comes immediately. You ask Jesus to come into your heart through faith. He comes and he indwells on the inside of you. He is teaching you to follow Jesus. He is helping you now, cleaning you up from the inside, regenerating, helping you with those things that you're struggling with, those addictions, those bondages, those things that are so hard for you now to get rid of. You know, the things that you can't get rid of by yourself. I don't care how many times you fall on the ground and you, you know, you weep and you roll over on the ground, you wake up, you go home, you still have them. Don't be hard on yourself. The Holy Spirit is working on the inside of you. You have to continue to repent. You have to continue to bring yourself to God. That's why David, the Bible says, David was a man after God's own heart. Not because David was perfect. We read David's story. David had plenty issues. But David strived to do right. David strived after God. David said, as the deer panted after the water brook, so my soul long after you. So David had a desire to do the things of God. He had a desire to please God. And if you have a desire to please God, he's going to help you. Now, when you make it a lifestyle, when you make it a lifestyle, the Holy Spirit backs out. He, he packs up and he, he moves out because he's a whole, he, God is holy. When you make sin a lifestyle, and what am I talking about making sin a lifestyle? When you no longer feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and you just doing you, and you feel okay, and you be like, well, I've been trying, and it didn't work, so you just begin to compromise, and you just begin to do the things that you know are wrong, that's when you now are getting yourself in trouble. That's when the Bible says, the evil spirit come out of a man, and they walk in the dry places, and then they come and return to see if the house is clean, and the house is swept clean and garnished. And the Bible says that these evil spirits say, Hey, boys, there's room in the inn. And they come seven times harder. And that's why when a lot of people, when they fall or when they fall from grace, what happens is, I mean, when you, the thing about it is, um, when, when you fall from grace, because the thing about it is, is that you are, you are sealed. You are the Holy Spirit. Jesus said he's married to the backslider. So now that person, what happens is, is so much 
harder for them to come back to Christ because now what happens is seven times that reinforcement has been reinforced seven times stronger and it's harder but it's not impossible and so that's why it's important people evangelists I am pleading with you people of God those of you that are called an evangelical ministry please I am begging you make sure when you lead people to Christ you are taking the time to explain to them you are taking the time to help them to understand get their number don't go talk but child I've been in my 10 people listen that that aggravates me nobody we should not be keeping numbers for to, to say we got these people in, 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 in Christ the numbers are when God everything that we do is all about him so please those of you that are talking and telling people about Jesus make sure you get numbers make sure you have a way to communicate make sure you are helping them to understand this walk because it's a new walk it's like you know you in, lost, you in space if somebody put you in space you wouldn't understand so you want people to explain to you when, when a child comes to school for the first time you can't expect them to say okay do the work get the work done no, you have to teach them. The teacher has to stand before the board and teach them what is needed, and then they're able to apply what the teacher has taught. You can't, you, you know, uh, you shouldn't just take the work. And, so it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. When you are teaching someone and you are telling them of Jesus, our job is to lift up Jesus. He said, "If I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me." This is what Jesus is saying. So I want us to remember this and let's not forget this. The Holy Spirit. He is our keeper. I want you to understand that. He will help you over every hurdle. But I have, I have a problem. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is so awesome. I remember when I first moved to this country. And my brother, he's a CPA. And um, um, he was he, he had this client. And um, I, you know, where we're from, we didn't have any taxes. There's no taxes or anything in the Bahamas. I don't know anything about any taxes and all this other stuff. You know, um, we just have national insurance and that's a couple of dollars and you're good to go. So um, I went there and he said, I'm going to show you what to do. I had no knowledge, no idea of what to do. I'm not kidding you. This is a true story. And so he took me to the place and he walked out. And I'm like, what in the world? Who does that? And I sat there. And I played with that program. It was QuickBooks. You know QuickBooks is not an easy program to learn. If you don't, especially if you have no knowledge of accounting or what to do. And I played with that software. And I began to pray. And I said, Lord, I said, Holy Spirit, I need you to help me. In two weeks, the Holy Spirit had taught me that QuickBooks so well that I was writing checks. I was doing things um, that I know I would never I, I could never do on my own. The Holy Spirit is so powerful, people, in your life. If you communicate with Him, He will teach you things. He will help you to understand the mysteries of God. He will help you to understand your daily walk. He will help you to understand the purpose of your life. He will help you to understand the brand new day. If you ask Him, if you talk to Him, if you give Him room, the Holy Spirit is like this. But the more you give Him room, the more He stretches out on the inside of you. And then... <laughs> you are now the Bible says those who are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God I'm gonna end with this Solomon says trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path trust the Holy Spirit he is your paraclete one that walks beside you listen we do not give him enough respect I am telling you he could be he'll be your closest friend you can talk to him you can ask him questions things you don't understand when I don't understand something I ask him it sounds crazy but I ask him ask him things um a lot of things I remember one time my body was feeling so weak and I could not understand I was like holy spirit I don't understand what's going on and holy spirit I woke up one night about three maybe three four o'clock in the morning and I just went and I was just looking and I came across the cinnamon and I came and and and, and the cinnamon was when um, you take it when you you know it helps to balance the insulin in your body I didn't know that and so I realized that okay I my sugar I was I was you know my sugar intake was too high and so as I took that in that cinnamon my body's my body was doing really good now let me show you the work of the Holy Spirit 
let me show how the Holy Spirit is so powerful. So I didn't know anything about it. So I'm at a function and I had these ladies talking about, oh, I put a, a, a spoon of cinnamon in my tea. You know it's good for the insulin. And exactly what the Holy Spirit told me that in, the cinnamon was for was exactly what this lady was saying. I was like, whoa, this is powerful. Now check this out. Now, I didn't know that cinnamon can also mess up the lining of your stomach. So we were at a tent and this lady came up and she testified and she didn't look like she was sound. But she's like, you know, when you take that cinnamon, you got to be careful of that cinnamon because cinnamon mess up the line of your stomach now this lady out of the clear blue just start talking about cinnamon and i read upon it and i was like oh holy spirit you are just so awesome i didn't know that so you have to understand this the holy spirit is so i can't begin to tell you how awesome he is in the life of a believer and that's why it's so important don't trust people people are gonna fail you the arms of flesh will fail you we don't mean to fail you but we have this kind of nature it's just the nature you know, but it's only God we can put our trust in the Holy Spirit. Jesus left them here for us so that we don't be comfortless. Talk to the Holy Spirit. He is God the Spirit. And He will hear you. He will answer you. He will show you things. The Bible says nothing happens on this earth unless He reveals it through His prophet by the Spirit of God. And so you must understand that the Spirit was here from creation. The Bible said the Spirit hoover over the water. And God said let there be light. So the Spirit of God was here doing and working in the earth fair from, from then. Believe me, get a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, there are times that the Holy Spirit will say, don't go anywhere right now. And I won't go. And there were times I wanted to go places. And the Holy Spirit said, no, don't go. And I was like, man, why don't why, why shouldn't I go? But I don't go. And then I, I was like, whoa, wow, my goodness. Thank God I didn't go. And sometimes when I don't listen, I'll be like, oh, my God. God, I should have listened. So, we have to understand the work of the Holy Spirit. He is, the Bible said, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will leave with you the Holy Spirit, who is going to lead you and guide you to all truth. If you do not know the Lord and you're watching this broadcast, one of the most awesome miracles, the best miracle that I believe that takes place on the earth is when an unbeliever, Decide, excuse me, that they're going to make Jesus their Lord and personal Savior. Now is the acceptable time. This could be your night, your defining moment, your day of change. You're tired. You've been through. You're going through so many things. But I'm telling you, who is better to take care of you than the one that created you? I don't care what nobody else say. God is your creator. He created you so he knows you better than you know yourself. Give him a chance. Listen, me try everything. Give him a chance. What have you got to lose? He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He promised us everlasting life. He promised us joy, unspeakable joy. He promised us a peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, will it be easy? No, it won't be easy. But it won't be difficult because you'll have someone fighting your battles. So now you're not going through these battles that you're going through alone. Now when you used to cry, you're not crying alone anymore. you got Jesus that is there working it out for you. He's helping you through this situation. So now you have, um, you have an advocate. You have the Lord. You have the Holy Spirit that is with you. So you're not alone in, in what you're going through. So when you give Jesus, no, he's not a magician. He's not a sugar daddy. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, mislead you tell you when you come here, take it all away. He will eventually um, when he knows that you are ready or, or when he decides that he's going to do it. Because the truth is he's been blessing you even before you've come to him. He reigns on the just and the unjust. He's a good God. He lo The amazing part about it, his love is the same for me as it is for you. His love is unconditional. His love is straight across the board. And there's absolutely nothing you or I can do to cause him to stop loving us. He loves you just the way you are. Don't think that, oh my God, I got to get it together. Oh, I don't think, I don't feel. No, no, no. You are a perfect candidate to show the miracle, the miraculous work of God. You are a perfect candidate to show that God is, oh my God, he is powerful. You are a perfect candidate to let the world know that, wow. People used to say, and it was so embarrassing at first. They used to say, boy, they used to call me Sherry. They said, if Sherry could change, anybody could change. And the thing about it is, 
every year for years and years and years, every time my family would call me, they would say, you know what we're talking about? I said, what? They said, we're talking about you. We said, boy, the best thing ever happened for you is Jesus. That's how terrible I was. They were just talking every year. They would sit down and just talk about the things I did. And they would talk about, wow, they, they saw the amazing change in my life. And I was like, oh my God, I must be a real, really terrible because I don't remember a lot of things. You know, because when you're in darkness, you really don't remember a lot of things. And so I'm telling you, when I came to the mouth this light it was the best thing I ever did and I am I am not I don't have any intention of turning back by the special grace of God the song said the world behind me the cross before me no turning back that could be your prayer that could be your testimony today so say this prayer with me if that's you on today if you're watching the recorded say this prayer with me say Lord Jesus I recognize that I'm a sinner in need of your grace I repent of all my sins come into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior Holy Spirit teach me to follow Jesus from this day forward in Jesus name we pray amen if you have said that prayer inbox me I have some materials I will pray with you I will answer your questions things you don't understand I will help you as a matter of fact I will send out my book to you I'm saved now what I will be there because I understand what it meant because when I came to Christ I did not understand what I was supposed to do next I didn't understand how I was supposed to act what I was supposed to do I was just totally lost I don't want you to be in that state I want you to understand this journey this beautiful journey that you've taken and i want you to understand the tactics now you have an enemy the enemy is the if, the if satan himself but now i can help you to understand your walk with god and help you to understand the holy spirit part in your life and the part that you play as a believer in christ so i'm so grateful to each and every one of you for watching and listening to the freedom radio broadcast brought to you by cheryl and fletcher ministries listen you can get more information about my ministry from cheryl at cheryl and fletcher ministries.com you can also check me on facebook pastor cheryl and fletcher on twitter at psfm 333 um periscope i don't know that one on snapchat cheryl and 333 on instagram at cheryl and 333 you can find me hook up with me let's talk and let's let's give hell some trouble and we can see the glory of the lord in the land of the living so god bless you god keep you and may he strengthen you thank you so much for watching until next time same time same place same channel i'm out my ministry at